Well, hello once more in the lovely YouTube community. Today, I have for you one of the US most notorious unsolved missing person cases. I'm talking about the abduction of 20-year-old Angela Hammond. Everything that I will be mentioning today is information that was found in the internet and press documents. I mean, zero disrespect to anybody that I mentioned here. And with that being said, let's head into the story. Clinton, Missouri is a classic American small town located about an hour south from Kansas City. With no more than 20,000 inhabitants and over half of those being married couples, you can say that this is a chill family town. Or at least I think so, I've never really been to Clinton. 20-year-old college student Angela Hammond was a popular young woman living right there in Clinton. In 1991, she was 20 years old, she worked at a bank and took classes at Central Missouri State University. In January of that year, 1991, Angela, or Angie, as everybody called her, was vibrant, beautiful, and engaged. Yes, she was engaged to no other than Rob Schaffer, a star athlete in high school who now had plans of going into the military. He gave Angie a diamond ring and promised to always take care of her. Beautiful picture right there, you can imagine the white picket fans and it all. To top this cake, Angie and Rob were expecting a baby. And sure enough, the couple was static about this. So when spring 1991 came, the weather was getting warmer and the couple were hanging together pretty much every day, of course. One night at around 10 p.m., Angie dropped Rob at his mom's house. He needed to babysit his younger brother while his mother returned home. Rob told Angie that they would meet back uptown once his mother got back home. Angie agreed on calling Rob in a couple hours and see how everything was going. I find this sequence of events kind of weird, like why didn't Angie stay with Rob to take care of the kid? Why didn't she head straight home? She was pregnant, it was late. I think that maybe she lived far and was waiting on Rob to finish his duties so they could head back home together, but then why didn't she stay with him? I don't know. The thing is that Angie did call Rob later that night, around 11.20ish, from a payphone located in the center of town, about seven blocks away from Robert's house. The couple was talking normally on the phone, but that was until Angie noticed something odd. While we were talking on the phone, she mentioned to me about a truck circling around the block. It keeps circling around the block. An older model, green Ford pickup truck. The truck then parked near the payphone booth Angie was in, and a man got off it. The girl started freaking a little when he approached to the payphones, but he didn't enter the booth that was right next to hers, and she chilled. Angie described the man to Rob as his scruffy looking, with a beard, mustache, and glasses, and also she pointed out the fact that he was wearing overalls. She gave a description of the truck as well. It was a late model green pickup truck with a decal sticker of a lake scene with a fish jumping out of the water and it covered the whole back window of the truck. As they kept talking, Rob and Angie, the man went back into his truck only to get back out with what Angie described to Rob as a flashlight. He appeared to be looking for something that he had lost. Rob told Angie to ask him if he needed to use the phone. Maybe the other one was broken. But the mysterious guy replied no, and said that he was going to try calling again in just a couple minutes. Rob started to feel uneasy with the whole situation and asked Angie if she wanted him to head there. But she said no, she thought it was fine and they just kept talking about other matters. Well, this was a bad decision because only a couple of minutes later, Rob heard Angie screaming on the phone. And that's when I heard her scream on the phone. I ran out of the house and just dropped the phone. I didn't hang the phone back up. When I heard her scream, the only thing that went through my mind is getting up there and finding out what the hell's going on. I saw a pickup truck going past me, and then somebody yelled out the window, Robbie. That's how I knew it was then. But when Robert turned his car around abruptly, this action damaged the transmission and this would prove to be a fatal trouble. He was able to chase the green pickup for about two miles and then his vehicle just stopped working. 
He got off it as soon as he could and ran for a little bit, but all he could see were the brake lights and dust as his fiance disappeared in front of his eyes. So after this, once contacted, the authorities based their search on Rob's testimony. But when nobody could confirm it, Rob himself turned into a suspect. This is very common. The partner is always the first one to be looked into. But this was hard to believe, even for Angie's mom. But this was hard to believe for anybody that knew Rob. Even Angie's mom stepped up, stepped up to defend him. And within a week of police investigation, Rob was fully cleared. He would not feel less guilty though. According to Angie's mom, Rob would keep blaming himself for what had happened. He always told Angie that he would take care of her, but at the end, he could not do it. Police's biggest clue, and almost the only one they had, was the green pickup truck. They ran the info across their databases, but for everyone's luck, there were like 1,600 possibilities. They tried looking for one that had the same color and mural on the back window, but they had no luck. The authorities soon connected the case with two others that had happened within a hundred miles of the spot where Angie was kidnapped. The first one of those happened three months earlier near the town of Max Creek, Missouri. 42-year-old Trudy Darby was working by herself in a convenience store. She was getting ready to finish her shift when she saw through the window somebody patrolling around the store. She immediately called her son to report a suspicious man that was lurking right outside, but even though her son headed quickly to meet her, when he arrived the convenience store was completely empty and there was no trace of his mother. Just two days later, Trudy Darby was found dead on a riverbank, only 10 miles away from the convenience store where she was kidnapped. Some money had also been stolen from there and she had two gunshot wounds in her head. The other case that Angie's was connected with was the kidnapped and disappearance of 30-year-old Cheryl Ann Kinney. Cheryl was a married mother of two who worked as a clerk at the Quality Convenience Store on Business 71 Highway in Nevada, Missouri. On February 27, 1991, she was working an evening shift. She was scheduled to work until midnight that day. However, since it was a slow night, she decided to close the store early. She clocked at 10 p.m., set the store alarm at 10.17, and got to lock the front doors. However, she never arrived home and was never been seen again. Her car was later found in the store's parking lot, suggesting that she never even made it there. But whether these three cases were related or not, it could never be fully confirmed or ruled out. Angela's case grew cold and stayed that way for decades. After years of not a word spoken, in April 2021, on the 30th anniversary of Angela's disappearance, the Clinton Police Department announced that there was a new theory being investigated in her case. Going through evidence, police found records of a testimony from a confidential informant that helped in a narcotics operation. This guy had received a cut and paste letter, which read something among the lines of, Hello, we know who you are. People like you deserve what you get. We know where your foxy daughter is at. She will meet us soon. Tell your wife she has our deepest sympathy in her farther loss. Goodbye. The letter correctly identified the informant's court-issued number, along with his estranged wife's first name. The letter was postmarked April 4, 1991, the same day of Angela's abduction. The informant's daughter was also named Angela. She and his wife were living in Clinton at the time. So, because all of these, investigators theorized that those involved in the narcotics operation targeted the informant's daughter, but mistakenly abducted Angela Hammond. Detectives have noted that, while this theory seems credible, they have not been able to rule it out. Also, they recently received an anonymous call from someone who who may have information about Angela's abduction. The caller specifically mentioned details involving this letter, but the department is still hoping that the caller will call back. Up to today, a reward is still being offered for leads in this case. 
it is an open case it is an ongoing investigation angie is not forgotten and her family are still awaiting for the right answers so this is it for today's case and like i said it is still an open one not yet solved let's hope that with the new technology fa angie's family will soon get their answers thank you for being another one and i'll see you very soon in the next one